So you run a business, you run a startup, you think about starting a business, but you're lacking the opportunity. Here are seven sources for innovative opportunities coming up now. Hi, I'm Oliver and welcome back to the channel Ask Me Startup, where we talk about startups, small businesses and the world that surrounds them. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and pushing the notification bell so YouTube lets you know whenever we're uploading new content. If you have a startup, if you plan to start a business, if you have a small business, please feel free to download our free startup checklist. Link in the description below. So every business or every entrepreneur is confronted with the same problem. I want to sell something. I have a great idea, but is it an opportunity? You know, you always have to ask yourself, am I selling the right stuff to the right people in the right amount? Most businesses fail to do that innovative processing in repeating and perfecting their own offering. This also could mean that you would have to change your offering. And most of the companies that are in existence today have not started from what they're offering today. So just keep that in mind. And then you have to ask yourself, where can I find new innovative ideas? That's why we want to talk about the seven sources of innovative opportunities today. And here we are with opportunity number one, the unexpected occurrence. Now, when you think about the current situation, nobody was expecting a couple of years ago that the whole world could be in a more or less shutdown and lockdown and people would have restrictions to endure. This is one of those really, really unexpected features or things that happen in life. But that's also where there was a lot of opportunities for people to make huge amounts of business. Whether it was selling masks, whether it is providing diagnostic tests or running diagnostic laboratories, for instance. These people have made a fortune and are still, you know, scaling up the business to an extent never seen prior to the current situation. You in your business can also ask yourself, look at the products you're selling look at what people are buying and then ask yourself, is that expected? Did I expect people to buy green apples instead of red? Did I expect people to buy Macs instead of Windows computers? I mean, just ask yourself any of these questions that are in relation to your business or to your thoughts or your ideas for the startup and then go for it and see whether what you've expected actually happened or something else happened. Then you are in the unexpected occurrence where you want to dig in and to capture this opportunity. Source number two, incongruities. Now incongruities usually reflect in something isn't the way it should be. Most of you maybe can relate to the fact that MySpace was there prior Facebook, but MySpace wasn't that sort of a social platform that it should have been. And Mark Zuckerberg and the Winklevoss twins actually realized that and started Facebook and get rid of all these incongruities that MySpace had and the rest is history, right? So ask yourself, is there something that shouldn't be like this, that should be easier, better, faster, more logic to people? Then you have a great business opportunity. Source number three, process needs. Let's assume you run a business. Let's assume you run a manufacturing site or a service site. What happens usually is you have your processes aligned in so-called standard operating procedures, SOPs, and you run them for years and years and years. But you never update them or you only marginally update them. Hence, you usually run into process needs, which means that you can do things better, faster and smarter within your own operations to save money, to be more at the customer site, to be more there active for the customers. An improved process could be that you, for instance, either outsource certain activities or concentrate on other topics that you have not concentrated yet, that you were just neglecting or had outsourced prior and now are insourcing because you might do a better overall job if the process is aligned and fast enough and acceptable for the customer. And that's very important. Always be customer centric, never ever be company centric, customer centric. It's not about you. It's about your customers because they are paying your bills. Source number four, industry and market changes. 
Things change all the time, but sometimes they are forced upon us. Now, if you think about the combustion engine for vehicles, you can now see that many countries have started to announce that by 2035, they will not allow new combustion engines, cars, to be sold in their country. That actually pushes forward the need for electric drive or alternative engines. Hence, you have a market structure change and that implies that you will need to adapt or you die. Hence, this is an opportunity for those that happen to realize this is going to happen fast. Good example would be Tesla. They have realized that much earlier than anybody else. And they have, of course, let's put it in a, in a nice way, leveraged it better than others. Doesn't mean that Tesla is going to be there forever or that nobody else can be better than them. But right now they are in the lead and they have taken advantage of that opportunity prior anybody else. Now the old brands, Mercedes, BMW, but, but specifically VW, Volkswagen, are trying to catch up. They might be successful, but we don't know. Another market change is the current global climate crisis. Now, customers are demanding carbon neutral manufacturing, carbon neutral products, healthier products for a more sustainable future. Hence, if you can offer products that are manufactured in a way that they are carbon neutral, that they do not harm our planet, you are in the lead by a huge margin today and you will have the greatest opportunities in the world. However, you need to take care of them and you need to leverage them. Source number five, demographic changes. Now, there are some changes that are obvious, like the aging population. That is a mega trend happening all over the world, except for like maybe Africa. And we will have other changes like migration because demographic changes happen all the time. That means that the composition of your local, maybe of a town or an area or even a whole country, composition of population is changing. And if that is a constant or if you know that in advance what is going to happen, you are in the lead of having a new opportunity. You can adopt to sell the products that those people actually ask for. Let's make the assumption that, you know, in Switzerland, 90% of Chinese would suddenly be the major population. Now, of course, that would mean you would have to sell different types of food, different types of vacation, different types of recreation. A lot of things that are currently happening in the world and you should think about your local area where you live and your market that you're selling to how are they changing look at the statistics on governmental official sites and you will find good hints on what to look out for and what these people are in demand in the future source number six change in perception now perception of people change all the time Processed food was great a couple of decades ago because it was new, it was innovative, it was fast and easy to handle. You could just put it in a microwave and start going and have a lunch or dinner, whatever. Today, people have a change in perception in that way. They are asking for less processed food, for healthier food, for less ingredients that are not necessary. Hence, you can leverage on those opportunities when you understand what the changes in perception are. Today, people perceive themselves as younger, even though, let's say, the 50s or people in their 50s are now conceived or perceived as people in their 40s a couple of decades ago. Hence, you see that perception shift. And that's why, let's say, for instance, Harley Davidson is selling motorbikes to older people because their perception has changed. It is now a bike for older or more comfortable people. Might be for those people trying to live their dreams, but at a later stage. You never know. You have to find the perception of your customers and see what and how does it relate to your business. Last but not least, source number seven, new knowledge. Now, new knowledge is the holy grail for many companies. And for instance, in our company, we are based on new knowledge. We have developed something that hasn't been known prior and we're now trying to make sense of it for the customers. We're actually establishing it in a way that companies will need it to, because they can sell their own products better to the customers. Now, that is, of course, a part of innovation that, let's put it that way, can take a long time. And we have to acknowledge that sometimes 
you would take a couple of years prior being able to sell up the product to the customers that you have developed and, de and, and established a new know-how. Now, does that make it a better startup? No, not necessarily, because if you can leverage off existing technologies, just make it in a better process, that's different, it's faster, etc. But the new know-how is more difficult to obtain. Hence, people you know, are attracted to it because you can protect it with IP. It's easier to work along. Now, that's also the reason why the pharmaceutical industry is so heavily insisting on intellectual property protection. Why? Because if they have put all those billions of dollars into developing a new drug, they want to earn the money from that drug because it was their own spending that made the know-how available. Now, that of course means that everything that is new know-how and that is actually usable, meaning it is not an idea, it is an innovation because an innovation is sellable. And if you're not quite sure, I'll link a video up here for you. Then you are on the right track. But please be aware, not every new know-how actually is an innovation. And please be aware that you, even if it would be an innovation, maybe the market isn't big enough. Bad things happen. All right, everybody, I hope this was helpful for you. Please leave a comment down below. Remember to subscribe, download our free startup checklist, and I will see you next time.